I'm your drug dealer tonight. I will give you some dopamine if you want to. Dopamine is the equivalent of pride and self-esteem, and you can get it over here if you behave correctly. I want to talk about my passion. It has become the topic of my life, such as my business. Originally being a clinical psychologist, today doing leadership development worldwide with a team of 10, I'm always encountering one topic repeatedly, and this is fear. Fear of change, fear of conflict, fear in any color, there is fear. And what I want to give you in the next 12 minutes is your pathway through fear into dopamine, where you feel just great, you will see. If you, of course, no pain, no gain, if you don't do anything, you won't get anything. But there is some chance. There's a saying I like a lot, and it says, on the other side of fear, there is magic. And there's a magic land I really encountered over there. My own story. 16 years ago, exactly this very situation would have been the absolute horror in my life. One of my biggest fears is talking in public. It is 100 people looking at you, judging you, deciding whether rather to like you or not. And I want you now to think about your fears. May it be the fear of rejection, may it be the fear of talking in public, may it be the fear of conflicts. And I want to give you a picture that very well describes how to deal with fears. A lot of people come to me and tell me I want to get rid of my fears. No, 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 your fears will die with you. They will give you company for a lifetime. Accept them, please. Yeah? And there's a nice saying from a Buddhist, of course. He says, what you accept uh, will not hunt you. He has an Indian accent, I can't make it. What you accept will not hunt you down. So accept your fears as your siblings, giving you company. Maybe not very comfortable siblings, but you know, maybe not comfortable siblings as well. They're giving you company. And I will draw a picture just to start how to deal with fears in general. Don't get rid of them. You won't. The first thing is, imagine a car. And you and your fear are in this car. Now, let's take myself as an example. 15 years ago, my fear is on the driver's seat and I'm on the passenger seat. My fear is deciding where I go in my life. My fear tells me you will not go to stage and talk in public. My fear tells me you will not go into a serious relationship. My fear tells me you will not talk to this girl. And I just, sitting on the passenger seat, agree and obey. Today, the fear is still in the car, but one crucial fact changed. We changed seats. That means I'm sitting today in the driver's seat and my fear is on the passenger seat. My fear still tells me don't say bad words on stage. Don't do this, don't do that. But I do decide in my life what to do. I do decide whether to go on stage even though I'm afraid. And I do decide to marry even though I'm afraid. And I do decide whatever even though I'm afraid. And I want to give you this power because at the end of this line is magic equals dopamine. <laughs> Which other drug gives you, gives you dopamine? I'm spending half a year in Colombia. Yes, exactly. <laughs> But uh, there is some backfiring with the second one. With this one I offer you, you just enjoy it. Yeah? There is no uh, hang hangover the next day. So, you change seats. Fear is not a good boss, but fear is a great consultant. Fear is great on the passenger seat, telling you, hey, this is dangerous. But you are smart and you know what's good for your life. You know that it's good for your life to do presentations, you want to make career. You know it's good for your life to overcome your fear of commitment and so on. And you just step over your fear. You say, thank you, fear, but you keep on going into the direction. And I want to show you how to do this, because it's very simple to tell you to do it. I'm a trainer originally. That means I always translate things into the how. I know a lot of people who tell you that you have to overcome your fears. Yes, thank you. How? It's like telling a depressive person you need to be happy. It's, yeah, if, okay, no effect at all. And what I will give you in the next 12, 10 minutes, 13 minutes, 15 seconds, I will give you the pathway into the magic land of dopamine and overcoming fear and what made me stand here today even though or maybe because 
my fear made me too. There are three steps, and I must not leave this carpet. There are three steps through fear. Each one hurts. No pain, no gain. It's like in the gym. You don't use the barrels, you will not grow. You just have a membership. The membership itself doesn't make you fitter. <laughs> but it makes other people richer, at least. Yeah. So, three steps through fear. The first one is consciousness. I will go into detail in a second. The second one is ownership. And the third one is overcoming. Let's go into detail. Consciousness. It's not awareness, please. There's a differentiation. Awareness is, I'm standing on this stage. How does it smell? How does it feel? Uh, I don't know. Do you feel your breath? This is awareness. Consciousness means you're stepping on a meta level, looking from yourself, to yourself from above, realizing what you do. There is a saying written on the Oracle of Delphi, and it says, Gnoti Zeoton, it's ancient Greek. And it says, know thyself, be honest to yourself. What I experience in my job every day with the highest managers making millions a year, they disguise their fears as not wanting something. The simplest thing, if you're afraid of something, you cheat on yourself and you say, I don't want this. Yeah? So I do, I'm not afraid. No, I'm not afraid. Of course not. Yeah, I just don't want it. I just don't like to do presentations. How to become more conscious, how to be honest to yourself. You will never be able to deal with your fears if you're not honest to yourself. If you do not admit, I am afraid, I'm small, I cannot take your judgments. I cannot take you not liking me. It hurts me. This is the first step if you want to overcome the fear of presentations, for instance, or the fear of conflicts. It's exactly the same. Or the fear of rejection. Exactly the same. And I want to give you very quick pathways now to your self-consciousness. Some of you maybe... <laughs> this sentence has changed already some people in my past, so be aware. Hopefully you won't get divorced after this TED Talk. Consciousness. <laughs> First of all, see your part. This is not the epiphany, don't worry. This is nonsense. See your part. But how? First sentence that brings you into seeing your part is what A thinks about B says more about A than about B. What you think about me says more about yourselves than about myself. See your part. Don't take pictures yet. There will come some more stuff uh, even. So... <laughs> What A thinks about B says more about A than about B. There are 100 people in this room. 30 maybe like me rather. 30 don't like me rather. It's you with your pasts, with your values, with your experiences with people like we with a, with a white t-shirt. You're applying to me. I'm just a projection area of your judgmental processes and the word is your judgmental processes. The good thing about this sentence, it's almightiness. If you are the one making the world constructivism, you can change it as well. If you are making your fear, you can change it as well. What does your fear tell you about yourself, not about the fear? What does your fear tell you about yourself? What A thinks about B says more about A than about B. Second one, even harder, even tougher. For me, also the basic sentence of leadership. You always attract what you are in life, not what you want. If you are surprised that you have always crazy boyfriends, <laughs> or if you're wondering why there are so many stupid people on the street, <laughs> there's a nice test, I heard it uh, a few weeks ago. It said, say the first thing that comes to your mind. The world is full of... <laughs> that tells you a lot about yourself. So you always attract what you are, not what you want. You attract what you are, not what you want. This is a pathway into your consciousness. Look at your life and ask yourself, what does it tell me about myself? You don't, hit a, you don't hit a mirror. You know it's you in the mirror. So do the same with your life. Don't be a victim. Second part, and now it's, my, it's one of my favorite phrases. What I see mostly when people are afraid and they have big egos and big salaries, they do one thing. They devaluate what they cannot do. So the sentence and the appeal to you is, don't devaluate what you cannot do. This is the easiest way never to develop, is to devaluate what you cannot do. You're not a good soccer player. You say, yeah, they're all low-class people. I hate soccer. You're not good in presentations. You're telling, ah, these are all salespeople, self-centered, male narcissists. 
No, no. Yeah, a little. So, <laughs> don't devaluate what you cannot do. Don't devaluate what you cannot do. It's really hard. So, these are the parts how you get into your consciousness. First part, that, me that means transfer to fear. Admit that you're afraid, even though you're a big man with a lot of muscles and a big salary. You're a little kid and you're afraid. Next step, ownership. I'm working a lot with phrases in my head because it works very well to manipulate myself. You cannot solve a problem you're not willing to have. You cannot solve a problem you're not willing to have. Very important. People reject the problem and they will never solve it. Please admit that you have some problems with your self-esteem. Believe me, 90% of people I know, myself included, don't come with a stable self-esteem, never questioning themselves. Of course, we are fighting for existence, especially in performance societies, because our self-love is conditioned. means there is a conditio sine qua non, that we are just good if we perform. We're not just good if we are fat and doing nothing. Then we have to hate ourselves. Constitution says, by the way, the human dignity is inviolable. We heard this sentence, this article, almost every day. Second, own second, ownership. You cannot solve a problem you're not willing to have. Third, and now we come into what you can even apply tonight. Overcoming. I built something for me because I'm a very simple guy and I need simple things to manipulate myself. Over here, feel good, feel bad. Time. Yeah. Uh, for all mathematicians, it's a coordination system uh, without numbers. <laughs> Continually. So, feel good, feel bad. If you're now afraid of a situation and you're a normal European person, you try to what with the situation? You try to avoid it, of course. Yeah? Why should I do stuff I'm afraid of? Yeah, I can do it easy and, and everybody tells you, don't do stuff you're afraid of, make it comfortable, buy another Big Mac. Yeah? So, you feel normal, you feel normal, and you avoid the situation, how do you feel short-term? Better, of course, you feel relieved. <gasps> I, don't, I don't have to do the presentation, I don't have to do the conflict, and another, another day in my marriage I'm ignoring all the huge problems we're having. What happens long-term? Of course, it's going down. It's going down when you go into your bed after, again, uh, refusing to do a presentation. How do you feel at night? You le feel like shit. I don't know if this is allowed, but you feel bad, at least. Yeah? <laughs> you, you feel bad. Because what's the currency you pay with? The currency is self-esteem. When, when your fear tells you what you do, driver's seat, and you're just in a passenger seat, you feel weak at the, in the evening. You feel like you have no control over your life. So what is it? What is to do? You go into the short-term pain. You stand on stage. You sweat. You stutter. You embarrass yourself, maybe. Ooh, pain. But how do you feel long-term? Please, very important, set your expectations right. If you say you have to do a perfect presentation, it doesn't work. If you say, I want just to overcome my fears instead of escaping for a lifetime, then it works. Because how do you feel at night when you go to your Himmelbett? To your pink bed and <laughs> sleep tight? You feel great. And this is the fish. Yeah. <laughs> the fish. <laughs> the fish works. Yeah. The fish works with everything. The fish works even with sports. Imagine for a second, you go to the gym. And then you take the barrels that are easy because you're just there to talk with your friends and actually you just like to go to the gym to say, I was in the gym. How do you feel in the long term? Terrible. You get fatter and weaker. If you go there, 6 a.m., not talking to anybody, being a lone nut, yeah? <laughs> and you take the barrels that really make your muscles burn and you get sore muscles, how do you feel when you leave? You feel like, whoa. The fish. Yeah. <laughs> I am there. I am strong. I give you an example with something else. Conflict. I try to avoid Austrian style conflict. No, let's have fun, drink some spritzer. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> I try to avoid conflict. I feel better short term, but the conflict doesn't go away. You have a problem because the conflict increases the longer you don't work with it. What's the solution? You go there, your heart beats, 
and you say, hey, let's talk about, I have some issues with you, please let's talk about it, even though the conflict has not been resolved, you will feel relieved in the evening. The fish works for a lot of things. The fish works for a lot of things. Except short-term pain to win long-term. The other thing, all of, uh, some of you probably know the marshmallow experiment. I have two minutes, 30 seconds. Marshmallows experiment. You get now one marshmallow or in 15 minutes, two marshmallows. If you don't take it, it's exactly the fish. Yeah? You take one marshmallow now, you have no marshmallow in the future. You look at one marshmallow, 15 minutes, suffer, you have two marshmallows. <laughs> and there is this long-term study that shows people who can delay gratification are more successful in life. If there, is a, if there are chips on the table and some chocolate and you manage not to touch it, you suffer, but you feel better. Yeah? And it's exactly this, and I want to give you the fish and do the fish today. I'm sure you have some call to do, some uncomfortable call, or you prefer to write an email because you don't want to call this person, some ex-partner, some business partner, maybe even in the party afterwards, maybe somebody's even in the room you don't want to talk to. Do the fish. Yeah, do the fish, but not for them, but for yourself. Because then you go to bed and you get it. I'm the dopamine dealer, you get it. And you feel proud and you feel full of self-esteem and you don't need any drug, you don't need any alcohol. You just need to challenge yourselves. So, the quick way through again. Consciousness, admit that there is fear. Ownership, own it. Third, overcoming, fish it. <laughs> but... And at the very end, at the, what is the name of this talk? Dance with your fears. Thank you very much. <laughs>